Hi. In this video, we're going to start talking about the first of the four tissue types that are found in the body, epithelium. The purpose of this video is so that way you can figure out what makes epithelial tissues epithelial tissues compared to the other three types. And then from there, you should be able to take epithelium and break it all the way down into the most specific tissue types that you have. As we go through, I'll touch on the characteristics that make each unique epithelial tissue type unique. And I'll also mention a few locations where you can find these different epithelial tissue types. So let's start off by describing what makes epithelial tissues epithelial tissues. So two big characteristics to help you differentiate epithelium from the other three tissue types. The first is the fact that there is apical basal polarity. So what this means is that the top will look different than the bottom. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have some epithelial cells and the bottom will be, let's say, flat. The top might be ciliated. So the apical part, the top, will look different than the basal part. Another big characteristic is the fact that oftentimes the apical part, again the top, will be exposed to some sort of open cavity or in the case of skin, exposed to the outside environment. Meanwhile, the basal part is attached to connective tissue. Therefore, it doesn't have an open surface. So that is going to be what makes epithelial tissues epithelial tissues. Now from there, you can go down one of four paths. You can go down the simple path, the stratified path, pseudostratified path, or the transitional path. And now what we need to do is talk about what makes simple, simple, stratified, stratified, pseudostratified, pseudostratified, and transitional, transitional. So we'll start with simple. Simple implies that there is one layer. Of cells. Stratified will describe how there is greater than one layer of cells. Pseudostratified is going to be one layer, but looks like many. Hence the term pseudo stratified. Pseudo is false. So this is falsely stratified. And then lastly, you've got transitional, which is sort of this unique kind of epithelial tissue type. It is multiple layers, so greater than one layer, but the number of layers changes. And we'll talk about why the number of layers changes. And in particular, with that, you have to think about where you find transitional. And we'll get into that in just a bit. So here you can see that you can really go down one of four paths based on how many layers of cells do you have. So you just simply count the number of layers that you see in a histology slide. So now let's start with simple and then we'll describe what specific epithelial tissue types you have within this simple pathway. So simple epithelium can be squamous, it can be cuboidal, or you can have simple columnar. 
simple squamous is a single layer of flattened cells. You will find simple squamous epithelium in layers where exchange or diffusion is extremely important and you want it to be as rapid as possible. So you find simple squamous in areas like the alveoli of lungs and capillaries of the body. Simple cuboidal is again one layer of cube or square shaped cells. You find simple cuboidal in ducts of glands and then the nephrons of kidneys where reabsorption and secretion is important. And then the last specific tissue type that is simple is going to be simple columnar. And these cells are column shape. You have one layer and oftentimes they will be ciliated. You find simple columnar epithelium in the small intestine and throughout their GI tract and then also in the female reproductive tract such as the oviducts or fallopian tubes. So that's the one path you can go down. Simple. Then you can go down another path. You can go down the stratified path. And the stratified path, similar to simple, you could have stratified squamous. You could have stratified cuboidal. Or you could have stratified columnar. The most common stratified epithelial tissue type is stratified squamous. And that is going to be where you have multiple layers of flattened cells. And the most common place where you'd find stratified squamous epithelium is going to be your skin, the epidermis, to be more specific. You have stratified squamous in areas where resistance to friction and durability and physical protection is important. Stratified cuboidal is one of the lesser common epithelial tissue types. And based on its name, stratified cuboidal, you have multiple layers of cube-shaped cells. And you have stratified cuboidal epithelium in glands, especially the large glands like the thyroid, the ovaries, the testes, um, and mammary glands. Stratified columnar, like stratified cuboidal, is also not overly common. It is characterized by multiple layers of col column-shaped cells. And you're going to find stratified columnar cells most commonly in epithelial transition zones, where stratified squamous starts to give rise to simple columnar. So you're going to find stratified columnar cells in the mouth, in the start of the esophagus, and also the rectum. The third route that you can take in the epithelial tissue pathway is pseudostratified. Now there's only one type of pseudostratified epithelium, and that is pseudostratified columnar. This is going to be one layer of column-shaped cells. Now, the difference from stratified and why this looks like it really is stratified, but it's not, is the fact that the nuclei are at different levels within that one layer of column-shaped cells. So in a histology slide, it actually might look like you have two layers of column-shaped cells just because the nuclei are in different locations. But that's not really the case here. It really is just one layer of column-shaped cells. 
you find pseudostratified columnar cells in the other tract within the body, the respiratory tract. And then also, you're going to find pseudostratified in the male reproductive tract. So a particular note here, you really want to be able to compare simple columnar to pseudostratified columnar. They're both one layer of column-shaped cells, but they look different based on where the nuclei are in that one layer of column-shaped cells. Simple columna you have in the digestive tract, pseudostratified in the respiratory tract. Simple columnar in the female reproductive tract, pseudostratified columnar in the male reproductive tract. Now the last path that you can take with epithelial tissues is transitional, and this is going to be where there's multiple layers, but the number of layers will change based on the amount of stretching or distension that occurs. The main places where you will find transitional epithelium will be in the urinary organs. Urinary organs like the urinary bladder, ureters, and therefore, when urine swells up those structures, the number of layers actually decreases. So the more stretching, the fewer number of layers, but it's always more than one layer. Okay, so there you have it. There we have the epithelial tissue types. You should be able to go from the very top with epithelial tissues as a whole, and then go down one of four pathways. You can go down the simple pathway, one layer of cells, in which you will have flat cells, squamous, cube-shaped cells, cuboidal, column-shaped cells, columnar. Or, if you see multiple layers, then you've got stratified. And you have multiple layers of flat cells, multiple layers of cube cells, multiple layers of column-shaped cells. You can go down a third pathway, pseudostratified, and that only looks really similar to simple columnar. So you have to look at where the nuclei are. Are they all in line? Or do they alternate in locations? And then the last one is transitional. And that's typically one that you're not going to commonly see. But you're looking for multiple layers of different kind of shaped cells. So I hope this video was helpful to you. In the next video segment on tissue types, we're going to go through connective tissues.